What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. This past week was very exciting because we got the release candidate build of iOS 16.2, which included a few major new features that will most definitely be making headlines next week. So in this episode, we're gonna discuss iOS 16.2 and what to expect in the final release, as well as an update on the bugs I've been mentioning for the past several episodes. And then after covering the software side of things, we're going to discuss major new developments and a potential price tag for the upcoming Apple car, why Apple's mixed reality headset might be facing another delay, big changes to the App Store, how an AirTag led to an innocent grandmother getting swatted, and more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. All right, so let's start by talking about iOS 16.2 and that RC build. So the first thing I want to discuss is Apple Music Sing. And this feature is going to be a hit, I have no doubt in my mind. I think it is a very fun feature, and it's actually much better integrated than I even thought to begin with. So how this works works is if you go to a song and Apple will have playlists by the way when iOS 16.2 gets released they will have playlists that only include songs that have this feature so you won't have to search around every single song to see that but it will eventually I'm, I'm assuming will be there for every song in the future but anyways if you go ahead and tap on the lyrics right here you will see this little microphone icon on the right if you tap on that that is where you get a little volume HUD which only changes the volume for the artist vocals not the instrumental volume so the instrumental volume stays the same and this just lowers the vocals or heightens the vocals to your desired length so that you can sing along karaoke style and what I really like about this also is that you can see we have lyrics on different sides of the screen to indicate when it's like a different artist or a different person singing that part of the song so you see that even for like producers right here so it's like a producer tag and that's even over here on the side which is pretty cool and you can see we have the live lyrics where it goes by the word instead of just highlighting the entire sentence and you can see we even have lyrics that are smaller when it's like a lyric that's in the background so there's a lot of little small changes that you really have to look for in ios 16.2 and i think it's awesome the lyrics are definitely much better now than they ever have been on ios and definitely better than they are on Spotify as well. Now, I did also want to talk about the iCloud encryption, also known as advanced data protection. Now, I've had a few questions about this, and there are also a few developments that we've learned in the past couple of days. So the first thing I want to talk about is that we've recently learned that Apple does not allow advanced data protection to be enabled for a brand new or semi-new device. So the exact time frame is not yet determined, but I have seen users on Twitter and Reddit share screenshots showing dates in like January or February for when they'll be able to enable this feature and it's only because that device is either brand new or it was just added to the Apple ID and that is a great protective measure to prevent a bad actor from enabling this feature right away if a user did get hacked and you know another thing I wanted to mention is a lot of people have asked you know why is this not enabled by default and the reason for that I talked about that already in the RC build but the reason this is not enabled by default is because because you do need a way to recover that data in case it gets lost. Remember, this is encrypted. That means that Apple is not going to be able to get your data back if it is lost. And that is why it is not enabled by default because your average everyday user is gonna have no idea what this is right here, a recovery key, a 28 character recovery key. They're gonna have no idea what that is or where to store it. So that is why it's not enabled by default and why it never will be enabled by default. Now I did set this up on my main phone and used a recovery contact and that was all I needed to do so you don't need to do both a recovery key and a recovery contact you can if you want the best you know case scenario for recovering your data but I highly doubt you're ever gonna need to actually use this to recover it you know you might but you probably only want to use one of these and I would recommend most people do the recovery contact just put it as like your parents or your loved ones now I can already see the headlines coming next week when it comes to the new airdrop change when we go into our airdrop settings right here and we have the everyone for 10 minutes so this is no longer available all the time for everyone it now reverts back to contacts only after 10 minutes and a lot of users are not happy with this change they're kind of blaming China kind of saying it doesn't give us the freedom on our device and I somewhat agree with most people I do think this is a great security measure put in place by Apple to, to only have this set to 10 minutes before it goes 
back to context only, but we need another toggle in settings to disable this. Maybe this can be the default, but we do need a toggle maybe hidden in settings where we can change this back to everyone. I also wanted to mention the always on display change for the iPhone 14 Pro series. So this is my 14 Pro Max. And if we go to always on display, we do have the option to turn on or off our wallpaper and notifications. So I'm going to bring over my iPhone 14 Pro, which is my main device. And you can see I have that turned off. I have both show wallpaper and show notifications turned off. And just for a side by side comparison, you can see this is what it looks like when you have your notifications and the wallpaper turned off on the left versus when they're both on 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 the right so i don't have any notifications right there but it would show those notifications when it goes black whereas on my main device over here on the left i don't have anything turned on so you can see it kind of takes your focus off of the background and you know anything else you have going on and it mainly is just for seeing the time which i actually really like the main reason for even wanting an always on display for me at least in the first place was for just quickly glancing at the time and maybe the date and that is what this new feature gives you where you can disable that so i will be turning both of these off i have also noticed a slight improvement in battery life it's not as major as I thought it would be, but I did notice a increase in battery life due to turning these two off. Now I do also have to mention live activities and the TV application for sports games is much better in the RC build. So I noticed that there is significantly less lag now with sports games, more specifically NBA games where the score is changing a lot that had issues on previous betas, but now in the RC build and the final release, it is much better. Now we also have Uber and Uber Eats finally rolling out live activity support for all devices. So this is rolling out slowly because because I did spend $10 on a water from a gas station on Uber Eats, typical Uber Eats with all their fees and tips and everything. But it was for nothing because I don't have that feature yet on my device. Although I have seen people on Twitter and on Reddit, other places saying that it is there for them. So you could try it out. I will be showing you this live next week. I'm sure by next week I will have this working on Uber Eats and for Uber, but that is perhaps the most useful, you know, use case for live activities. So it's good to see it finally rolling out. Now, another change that really went under the radar throughout the entire beta stages was the messages search improvements so this isn't working as well as I thought it would yet. I'm assuming this will get better with time, but now in messages, you can kind of just treat it like the photos application and you can search for specific things like for cars, like for dogs, like cats or like a person's name. So if I just search for my name, you can see there are certain images that populate here now along with links and even locations. So you will see a lot more information now in other places like photos and other places like that when you search for something in messages. Now, I did also notice that the weather application is starting to show news again. So for a few days now, it was not actually showing in the weather application. So it seems like Apple is still working this out. But you can see here now for select cities, you do see this news section inside of the weather application. Just know it is not for every city. It's really only for major, major cities like New York, at least for the time being. But if there's like a hurricane or a bad storm or a tornado in your area, you will likely see that news section right there. And there are tons of other features and changes in iOS 6. 16.2 that I didn't even mention in my RC build video or this video right here. Of course, I am saving those for my big 16.2 what's new video. That way I'm not just repeating myself and all of these videos talking about the same features over and over again. Now, speaking of software, iOS 16 is now installed on about 69% of nice iPhones, according to Mixpanel. So compared to Android, this is a massive number because in August, Android 12 was almost a full year old and was only running on 13 percent of devices that is just insane and of course it is very important for users to update their devices for several reasons but the main one being for security updates now we do also have a few bug fixes here with ios 16.2 and the first two are the ones i've been complaining about for a while now especially number two but the first one is the stutter from going to the home screen from an application so if i went into a third-party app like twitter and it loaded up and i went back to the home screen there would be a slight stutter right there and it happened to me on all devices and several others reported this as well but i can confirm that that has been fixed here in 16.2 and the rc build and the final release but the most annoying bug is the black wallpaper bug related to focus modes i talked about that pretty much on a weekly basis here on the channel i had to stop talking about it because i mentioned it so much but this has been fixed in 16.2 and i don't know what to say i'm so excited this has been there since ios 16.0 beta 1 at the very first beta 
all the way back in June, I've been dealing with this. It's been so annoying, but now it has finally been fixed. So you will no longer have the black wallpaper on the lock screen and the home screen just randomly throughout the day when a focus mode turns off. And then we also have a fix for the YouTube black screen bug. So this was not a YouTube bug. This was an iOS bug, and that has been fixed finally with the RC build. However, we do still have a few bugs remaining. So the first one is inside of Safari. So if you go to Safari and you pull down the control center and then go out of it real quick and then tap for the keyboard, you can see the keyboard kind of has that delay right there. And sometimes it will be completely gone. It will be completely disappeared. So you have to do it really fast. If you tap right there and then tap, you will see there is a lag right there. We do also have the lag for our home pods here in the home kit section of our control center. For some reason, it's only for the home pods, not my thermostats. And then a lot of people are upset that 16.2 did not address the volume controls during a phone call or a FaceTime call. So you're still not able to adjust those during a call here on 16.2, which is unfortunate. All right, so when can we expect to see iOS 16.2 and iOS 16.3 beta one? So first off, iOS 16.2 is most likely coming on Monday, December 12th, although it really could come any day from the 12th through the 14th would be my guess. So it tends to be earlier in the week most of the time. So I would, you know, expect that. Now, as far as 16.3 beta one, that is also likely to come next week. But keep in mind, we're probably not going to have a beta two for a while, probably not till the second week of January right here. So you will want to be careful when updating to 16.3 beta one, if you are still on the beta program. Now, if you are still on the beta program, but you want to get off of that, you can just remove your profile. You do have the RC build installed. So you're not going to see an update even after you delete that because RC is most likely going to be the same as the final 16.2 release so keep that in mind and if you still don't know how to delete that just go into your settings go to general and then down to vpn and device management go to your beta profile and then tap on remove profile all right so now let's move on to the latest apple news and let's start with the apple car something we really haven't talked about much in this series at all so according to bloomberg apple has scaled back its apple car project and is not expected to release it until 2026 now so it's also no longer expected to be fully self-driving which is kind of unfortunate, but that was also very predictable. The report says this, the car project dubbed Titan has been in limbo for the past several months as Apple executives grappled with the reality that its vision for a fully autonomous vehicle without a steering wheel or pedals is not feasible with current technology. They're now planning a less ambitious design that will include a steering wheel and pedals and only support full autonomous capabilities on highways. The plan is to develop a vehicle that lets drivers conduct other tasks, say watch a movie or play a game on a freeway and be alerted with ample time to switch over to manual control if they reach city streets or encounter inclement weather. And Apple expected to sell this car for more than $120,000, but that was when it was supposed to be fully autonomous. So now they're aiming to offer it for less than $100,000. And it continues by saying that Apple has not yet settled on a design for its car and the vehicle is considered to be in a pre-prototype stage. The company is aiming to be ready to design by next year and have the features set by the end of 2024. It then plans to put the car through extensive testing in 2025. So yeah, the Apple car is starting to seem much more like a reality as time goes on. And that under $100,000 price tag is a massive plus. It kind of puts it in direct comparison with the Tesla Model S and the Mercedes EQS. So, you know, I doubt many people expected that price to be that low, especially for being an Apple product, but I'm sure there will be a lot more to come on this project. But with these new developments, what do you think about the Apple car? Would you actually consider buying an Apple car in a few years? Please let me know your thoughts below. I'm very curious. And speaking of a yet to be announced product, let's update you on Apple's mixed reality headset, because it looks like we may have yet another delay on our hands, but don't get mad yet. It's not a major delay. So here's what Ming-Chi Kuo had to say. My latest survey indicates that a mass shipment schedule of Apple's mixed reality headsets may delay to the second half of 2023 because of software related issues. The mass shipment schedule of components is still likely in the first half of 2023, but due to postponed mass shipment schedule of the end product, Apple's mixed reality headset shipment forecast in 2023 will likely be less than 500,000 units 
which is lower than the market consensus of 800,000 to over a million units. It's still yet to be determined whether the media event schedule will also delay, but usually if the time frame between the media event and the end product mass shipment is too long or too far away, it's detrimental to promotion and sales. So basically this headset is being delayed due to software related issues and not hardware constraints or issues. And because of this, we might not see that January Apple event after all. But of course, time will tell. Now let's move on to some very interesting App Store news because according to Bloomberg, Apple has just changed its pricing for apps in the App Store. And I'm talking pricing as in what developers can charge for their apps. So prices used to be capped at $1,000. That was the most anyone was able to list their app for sale for. And that has now been increased to $10,000. And the lowest that you could list in the past was 49 cents for subscriptions and 99 cents for apps. Now that's 29 cents. So it's gone much lower. And the report says that there are 700 new price points in all, though the 100 highest levels will require approval from Apple. And it says that developers also have new options for setting prices across different countries and currencies. And the new price options are available starting today for subscription based applications, and they'll be available for all other applications and in app purchases in spring of next year. Now I did also want to briefly discuss the Eufy camera situation because these have been sold by Apple. So basically to catch you up, a couple of weeks ago, a security researcher discovered that Anchor's Eufy security cameras sent user images and information to the cloud without the owner's consent even if they did not pay for a cloud subscription to begin with. And in response to this, instead of coming out and apologizing and saying, you know, we did wrong, Eufy just simply added a statement to their App Store page and in their application that discloses that they are in fact doing this. Now, the issue all along was not that they were uploading images to the cloud without user consent, which is pretty sketchy, you know, but it was more so that they were not informing users or telling users that this is what was going on. It was not made very clear. And they actually specifically said that everything is local only that is obviously not true so this is a super shady move by Yufi and really a bad luck for anchor who owns the company so if you do have a Yufi camera just know that you're not fully private it's not all fully local only like they say and then finally let's talk about how an innocent grandmother was falsely swatted by the fbi thanks to apple's air tags so it all started in january of this year when a truck was stolen from a denver hotel and that truck contained six firearms two drones four thousand dollars in cash and an iphone 11. the next day a denver detective interviewed the owner of the stolen property and was told that apple's find my app had pinged a residential address twice on the day of the robbery. So the detective then drafted an affidavit to search the resident's home only to find out that it was actually the home of a 77 year old innocent grandmother. But it gets worse because officers used a battering ram to destroy her garage door and door frame and even placed her in the back of a police car. They also destroyed property in her home, including her collectible dolls, as they searched for the home for those stolen items. But of course, none of that stolen property was ever found in the house. So due to this, that lady is suing the police detective as she should over the search itself and the destruction of property. Now, the complaint alleges that the detective failed to corroborate the location independently and that Apple's Find My app is designed to determine approximate locations and should not be used as a law enforcement tool. The complaint also states that neither the detective nor the police department apologized for this raid and that the police department will also not be paying for any of the repairs from that search. That is just wild. So there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some updates on the latest iOS 16.2 changes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my iOS 16.2 What's New video next week, along with a lot more videos coming to close out 2022. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.